Hi, I'm Steve Van Meter. Welcome to your Monday night premiere where we take about 15 minutes every Monday and Wednesday night to try to make sense of some markets that, that are starting to make a little bit of sense. Not a whole lot, but they're starting to. All right, so over the weekend, there's quite a bit going on. Uh, the markets are still very, very bullish. Traders are talking about markets oversold, stocks are going to go higher, shorts are going to get squeezed. And people still are in love with the notion that there's going to be this blow off top where stocks are going to, let's see, oh, I'm starting to get this a little bit better. This go like this. And we're hearing talk, oh, S&P is going to hit 3,000, 3,200. There's something called monetary deceleration. If you look at the economic data, it is not that great. In fact, if you want to see how bad the economic data is, go back to 2009, because that's what it looks like today. So everyone's blowing off this whole Mexico tariff deal. Uh, it's pretty serious because uh, on the 10th, which is seven days from now, the first 5% round of tariffs will go into place on about, I think, $360 billion worth of goods. And if you follow Trump's tweets over the weekend where he says, we've been talking for several decades, we need to see action. I think he's pretty serious. I mean, you, if you can't figure out that the tariffs on China were serious and, and now Mexico and uh, who do we also, we, we added tariffs to India over the weekend. Those are effective, I, I think, right now or maybe in the next couple. Oh, no, the fifth. I'm sorry. Uh, in, in two days, those go to effect. It kind of makes me wonder when people are going to actually believe that these things are serious. Now, of course, investors think, oh, well, the Fed just needs to cut rates. Look, that's not going to work because of the monetary lags. As the Fed cuts rates today, they really don't hit the economy for 18 months, 24 months. It makes no difference. It's not going to even matter. But on top of that, we got some interesting news from the Department of Justice saying they're looking into uh, antitrust legislation against Google. Uh, I want to say, and then they did something I didn't get a chance uh, with to see what's going on with Facebook and Apple, mainly because I just got back from Los Angeles. Those who, who know, I know it's not very many people. Um, we had, uh, Kim had her surgical post-op appointment uh, this morning. It was her three-month follow-up. It just seems longer. Maybe it's because she's gotten so much better the last few weeks that it just seems longer. Um, but but we, she's had some numbness uh, up in her arms and we're like, ooh, we better get some x-rays of that. Her surgeon really, you know, we we're thinking, okay, there's gonna be another surgery, which kind of knew was gonna happen at some point. Maybe the last surgery triggered something that would shift. And the surgeon really didn't think so. We did have some extra x-rays done and then we had some before we left. And you know, usually when there's something wrong, doctors will call you right away, and at least since I left for, to come into the office. Hadn't heard anything, so she's doing well. And um, you know, surgeon, you know, calmed a lot of our concerns. You know, we had our little list. You know, nah, it's not. You're worried about nothing. No, no, not a problem. So I think we left there you know, very optimistic. But there still is a potential for another surgery in the short term. But I think once uh, we get the results back on the X-rays as we were walking out the door, I think we'll know. So uh, it's all good. So she's doing well off all forms of pain medication, if, unless you count Tylenol not bad. All right. Anyways, let's uh, get on to the disclosures. The content of this video is provided as educational information only is not intended to provide investment or other advice. This material is not to be construed as a recommendation or solicitation by or selling a security, financial right instrument, or to participate in any particular training strategy. This video was paired by Stephen Van Meter on personal capacity. Please express this video that everyone do not reflect the view of Atlas Financial Advisors Inc. or Stephen Van Meter Financial. Okay. So I want to spend a lot of time on the charts. Uh, pretty much, uh, We're going to look at how hedge funds are positioned, how they're wrong. But all of a sudden, what's going on in the markets, we're, we're seeing from in a technical perspective, we're seeing, you know, if we, if we had this as a support level where prices are finding support, they're starting to come out of the edge and look like they're headed down. Now, a lot of traders say, no, look, they're holding here. They're holding here. That means they're going to go higher. People, again, do not understand what a monetary deceleration is. They, they just don't get it. All right, anyways, let's take a look at how hedge funds are positioned incorrectly in the markets because now it's going to look very obvious and how wrong, just how wrong they are. All right, first up, this is the 10-year treasury yield. Yields are in red. In the speculative positions, hedge funds, or also is known as a dumb bunny or showed in green. Now, just if there was an opposite bar, maybe it would be blue. The smart money is taking the exact opposite position of this. So yields are falling. And what's happening is 
the the hedge fund managers are taking short positions betting interest rates are going up so what you can see is they're losing money and they're losing money quickly here so that's what you really should understand now they backed off last week their shorts on the long bond the 30-year bond but they're still heavy i mean they, they increase their shorts on the 10-year backed off on the 30-year they're losing in both places let's look at oil oil their specs uh, drop their positions down they're still very long they still really believe the oil prices are going to get back up uh into these probably 70 some dollars a barrel unfortunately these people do not know how to follow uh that oil prices follow the five-year treasury yields and five-year treasury yields are headed lower it tells us that oil prices are headed lower which means in tuesday and wednesday when we get the api and then the eia data it would be highly probable that we should see a build in inventories. Obviously, we'll see. Now, you can see how good the smart money is. They finally baited the uh, hedge fund managers into taking long positions on the S&P 500 right as it went down. Isn't that uh, pretty nifty? Uh, that, is, that is pretty cool how they managed to do that. Uh, so there you can see the smart money is shorting the market there. Uh, we're let's see euro futures let's not let's not do that gold still eh, not overly long but somewhat long gold uh, gold popped up today to hit of course this guy's downward trend line I, I don't think we're at the breakout just yet we'll look at the charts when we get there and I'll show you why that I think this is just a move to to bait people in um, but there is a bigger move coming and if this is the beginning of it there's still plenty plenty early for for what looks like uh, a decade-long rally uh, potentially in the mining or in the gold and gold mining uh, stocks. Looking at the Nasdaq, uh, they uh, smart money got the uh, hedge fund managers to take long positions as stock mar as tech stocks fell. And the only place the smart money seems to be off is in the small caps, uh, where the hedge fund managers are slightly short and they are correct on that position. Not very often, but they happen to be uh, correct on those positions. And taking a look at the U.S. dollar, that's still somewhat long the dollar here on uh, as the specs. Dollar is kind of starting to roll over. I think it could go just a little bit higher if it does truly follow that Wyckoff chart that we looked at. Uh, it, the dollar's got just a little bit higher to go, maybe up to 99 before it goes down. But it may be peaked out here. It's just really hard to say. And then as far as volatility futures go, the uh, hedge fund managers remain short volatility. As volatility is rising, they believe the volatility is going to stay low. And the way you can translate all of these charts is real simple. They're wrong. All of these hedge fund managers, the, the dumb money, they are positioned incorrectly because in a monetary deceleration, the opposite for much on every chart is what's about to happen. And we can see it. We've seen the stock market go, start to go down. We're seeing uh, interest rates really go down and volatility start to rise. So you can tell how just mispositioned all these people are. Now let's take a look at the charts and see what's going on over here. And we'll probably spend the rest of our uh, time here in, in this. So here's the S&P 500. Let me kind of slide it over a bit. And you can see it's falling down. And I, what did I say Friday is probably going to tag its support and make a run at its 200 day moving average. Really, even though sentiment data says people aren't bullish, I what I read online is they're really bullish. They're maybe go, they're going crazy. This, they think, oh, the market's just going to explode straight through here. Um, yeah. OK. So anyways, in overnight trading, so during Asia and European markets, S&P 500 actually fell. This is during today, but it did actually fall in during what's called overnight trading, tagged the support level just under uh, 2735, kind of bounced off it and then found some sellers uh, kind of in midday trading into close. So you see a red candlestick. I'm still not ruling out a retouch of this 200 day moving average, but you can see we're on a cliff here that starts to get a bigger move down. And that means 2600, even if we go back up to the 200 day moving average, 2600 is coming soon. And the main reason we know that's coming is because 10 year treasury yields are falling off of a cliff. Just exactly like I said was going to happen. Here they go. And you can see the 10 year treasury yields, the last bit of support right here uh, is just around, you know, this just a little bit over 2%. So we're 2.35 is kind of the bottom end. Uh, and they're right back where they were before the at 
uh, back at the October election at 1.9%. So you can see how fast they're moving down here. Now, some people say, oh, well, they're over uh, overbought. So treasury bonds are overbought. I mean, too many people are buying them, so certainly they must reverse. If you understood a monetary deceleration, you can't make that claim. Markets are not functioning normal, but people think they are. And that is ultimately how the Fed convinces people to position their money incorrectly. Because the Fed gets everyone piled in on one side, they start their monetary deceleration by raising interest rates, tightening the balance sheet, nothing really changes. So people say, wow, well, it doesn't, there's, you know, there's no effect. So I'll just be really bullish. And then they start looking at their charts and their indicators like, well, this doesn't make sense. It shouldn't make sense because the Fed is monkeying inside the markets and that doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. So you can see yields are headed really low or much, much lower. And if we chart stock prices, as I like to do uh, against that, oops. Well, it tells you the S&P 500 has got a long ways down to go. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense um, that we're going to see a bounce in stock prices with yields continuing to fall. What it's telling us is one very, very clear thing. Whoops, I'm trying to switch back here. When interest rates fall, it means financial conditions are tightening. And when financial conditions tighten, volatility starts to go up, stock prices go down. And in this case, you've got a potential that, I mean, I've, been, I've written about this big unwind that's coming. We're, we're kind of seeing it now we're in real time because interest rates are falling. If we start getting all this money to shift, and again, there's trillions of dollars, so not a whole lot of it even has to shift over. That means yields are gonna face potentially their all time low. That would be really interesting because, for a lot of reasons because we would see a double bottom in yield. So what could happen is interest rates could come back down to their, uh, oops, where, where is their low here? Down here. Wouldn't that be interesting if interest rates came all the way back down to their low, the Fed went back to zero, and then the market went bonkers over inflation. Of course, the smart money will be positioned correctly to do that. And then they're gonna find out just what happened in 1930, six months into the beginning of the Great Depression is, oh, there's something called the monetary lag and cutting interest rates doesn't make a difference. And so we have it. All right, let's keep rolling here because I've been chewing up some of the clock. Uh, here's gold uh, futures. So we see gold popped up. Remember I said, I thought gold was headed here and all of a sudden, boom, boom, boom. It's right into, it's right into resistance. Now I only have one line, but I could draw a band and move this line right down to here. And I say, all we've done is gone uh, from a little bit of support into this resistance up here. And if we look at the gold mining uh, shares, we see when it, it found support here. And then so if, if it holds support, it goes higher. So we see volume picked up, buyers came in, pushed this up right back into resistance. Will this hold? I don't know. Uh, looking at silver, and silver I think is a better proxy. We see here it came down and boom, found some buyers, but here is resistance right here. So silver is telling us that gold is probably not there uh, is, or that gold is in the wrong space. The other thing to look at is emerging market stocks. Remember I said the emerging market stocks are a good lead on where gold is headed and look what happened. They came down and they found a little bit of support right in this mess right here. And I said, watch this thing go up and potentially hit its 200 day moving average or something in there and get rejected. And look, it came right into resistance, crossed over and got pushed right back down. So what emerging market stocks are even telling us is that gold may be overplaying its hand. That's all we can say at the moment. Uh, we'll see, I mean, look, if you're worried about anything getting uh, missing out, it's got to really break through this line before we start to get excited. I mean, that's this line right here is where the gold mine stocks need to get to. Uh, oil and gas producers obviously headed low. Uh, they bounced today, but are headed lower back down to their December lows. Crude oil along that line found tried to, is trying to find support in support and it's not. So if we see some builds from uh, the API and EIA reports, Look for crude to continue lower, and then it's going to make a run at its December lows. Uh, lumber prices bounced a little bit off of, uh, came back and crossed over support. Doubt this is going to hold, but if this breaks down, it's telling you the whole market has got a lot lower to go, a whole lot lower to go. And with that, I've only got a few seconds left, so let's look at everyone's favorite stock, Tesla. 
Uh, and you can see Tesla's breaking down. I, I have to go to a longer uh, chart here. Here is the 20 year weekly chart, not that they've been around 20 years, but you can see it's breaking down this very long channel of support where buyers have been buying. If they don't bring buy, if buyers do not come in here and hold this, uh, Tesla stock is going to likely head down next to, uh, it'll probably try to find some support right here at one, about 165. And from there, then it's down to this, you know, 145, maybe even as low as 140 to 160. And then after that, Tesla's really a sub $40 stock because that means everyone that made their money from here to here has sold and is leaving everyone else to pick up the pieces. I'm Steve Van Meter. I'll see you Wednesday night. Bye now. Oops. Oops, oops, oops.